Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, AstroVentures. Welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, my name is George, and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Sky Guider Pro or the Star Adventure. Today, I wanted to talk to you about teleconverters. Um, it's a lightweight, um, less expensive than, a, uh, than purchasing a whole lens, but it, not to say that it's cheap but it's a less expensive way to extend the focal length or magnify the focal length that you have to something longer for less money. So taking a look at a 300 millimeter lens, in the Nikon lineup, we have a 1.4 teleconverter and it will make your lens act as though it were a 420 millimeter. 300 millimeter with a 1.7 teleconverter will take you out to 510 millimeters and a 300 millimeter lens with a two time teleconverter will actually take you out to 600 millimeters. Now, they're really easy to use. It simply just fits in like a lens does, but in between your lens and your camera body. And this is great that you get these extra focal length distances, but there are also some cons to it. So for example, this 300 millimeter lens uh, paired with a 1.4 teleconverter, if we started out with an f4 prime, that means our new aperture is going to be 5.6. So we've lost a good bit of light. Uh, the same f4 lens, using it at a 1.7, is going to take you up to an f6. And then at 300 millimeters, that two time teleconverter is going to take you all the way to an f8. So you're choking off a good bit of light uh, by doing so. So it's a bit of a trade-off. The other thing you have to consider with this is that the greater the magnif magnification, the more you're going to soften the image. Now, with that said, a two-time teleconverter, you're going to notice that softening the most. 1.4, the least. The 1.4 generally does a really good job provided that you put it on good quality glass and you don't lose much. I have found and personally owned the 1.7. I found it to be the compromise between giving me that extra length but not getting too soft and not giving me quite enough reach. The other thing is, as I had mentioned earlier, you need to put it on some really good glass. And with that said, not every lens is going to accept a teleconverter. So you really need to do your research first as to what lenses you can use it with. And I would double and recheck that because you don't want to possibly try to damage a lens or your camera body by trying to fit a lens onto a teleconverter that just isn't going to work. And, and to correct myself, you're not going to damage the camera body, but you could damage the rear element or the front element of the teleconverter by trying to put a lens on that doesn't belong there. Lastly, one of the things I want to talk about is what it's going to do to your image. And on your image, and where I use the teleconverter, is when I'm going after a small object that's going to be in here. And the reason being is that the teleconverter is going to cause this distortion out here at the edges to really be uh, worsened over what it would normally be. And so ideally, I go after small targets with the teleconverter, and then I crop down. So that way there, I have this relatively distortion-free area in the center, and I've cropped out what a teleconverter will mess up out on the outer edges. So they are a great option. Just know that you're going to, uh, with the good, there's bad. You're going to extend the focal length effectiveness, but you're also going to reduce how much light you're going to be able to bring in and know that you're going to need to trim out the outer edges. The greater the magnification, the more you're going to have to trim. And again, lastly, just that safety warning for your lenses. Do your research, triple check your research, and make sure that the teleconverter that you're using is going to work well with the glass you want to pair it to. Uh, sometimes they just flat out don't fit. 
So, and then lastly, make sure that the glass you're using is outstanding glass because glass that's optically okay is going to become bad. Well, until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.